So I just saw No Limit Soldier's newest video, which pretty much sums up everything I said about him, which is I'm 100% right. Okay, this guy is the real life John C. Riley stepbrothers. He's the real life. He's a guy who literally has no accomplishments in his life. He lives with his father, hopes and prays his father gives him 10, maybe $20 so he can get some chicken, chicken wings. You know, I don't know. He claims he has a job. We see the dude drive around all day. We, we don't see nothing about this guy. So it's it's either one, one of two things. He either works for Uber or if he doesn't work for Uber, I don't know what his job is. What is his job? It's either that or he's in the woods. So it's... What do you do in the woods? <laughs> What's it? I don't know. I, I I don't even want to speculate on that, but it sounds like some, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer shit. Okay. You know, what kind of a job? You ever hear someone say, what do you do for a living? Well, I hang out, I, I hang out in the woods all day. That's all, that's all this guy's ever doing. He's either in the woods or he's driving a car. That's it. That's all we ever say. Okay. Now, I mean... The, I don't want to keep repeating myself. It's like the guy's like, well, I'm not sharing nothing personal. This is what he says to me. He goes, you can ask me questions. I am not sharing nothing personal. But you did share a lot about yourself. He doesn't even realize that this dumb friggin' moron. You told us you sold AMC at a loss. He said, I don't know if he realized it. You used to be called the AMC No Limit Soldier. The reason why you took out off the title AMC is you sold you sold your AMC, okay, at a, at a very substantial loss. Then you switched all your money into Megalodon, MEGL, of which now you re, you're even at a bigger loss, which there's no recovering. I'm not a financial planner. I don't give financial advice, but let, let's be realistic. You, get, you got a better chance of being eaten by a Megalodon than getting your money back, okay? So the bottom line is this. It, it doesn't take like a rocket scientist. You understand? You don't have to be like Sigmund Freud or Albert Einstein to realize you have no money, that you live with your father, that you're completely and utterly, I don't know, a loser. You look like you have a haircut out of Teen Wolf, you know, the 1980s movie. I mean, you can't afford a haircut. You, you don't have your own tools. You use your father's tools. You live in your father's house. You're completely 100% dependent on your father. That's it. Only, you, have, you, have, you see, it's it's basically psycholog you know, a psychological thing. Okay? We, we've all studied, you know, in college, psychology. And it's psychology 101. Whenever a person talks about another person in their life over and over and over again, what does it tell you? They're completely and utterly dependent on this person, right? Like, think about this. You notice how, like, I don't talk about my father that much. I don't know if you... This is uh, Psychology 101. Besides the fact that my father passed away, may he rest in peace, he was never a person that I counted on in my life. So I wouldn't talk about him. I would be like, that's it, you know? I mean, So when a person is constantly, constantly... Like, almost every other video that I have saw with No Limit Soldier, he's like, my father taught me this. My father taught me how to be a man. My father taught me this. My father does this with me. We do a lot of things together. My father taught me, you know, with the tools and how to do this and how to change the, you know, the friggin' thing on the car. Whatever it is, okay? All the baguette. Okay, so what does it tell you? It tells you that his father is a very, very big part of his life. Now, you might say, well, there's nothing wrong with that, but how old is this guy? 55, 60 years old? No limit soldier. This is no, this is no teenager. This is, right? This isn't a guy who's like 18. Listen, if he was 18 years old, if he was 20 years old, that's a beautiful thing. You have a relationship with your father. This guy's 65 years old. Okay, so... It's a very abnormal situation. It's a very abnormal situation that he lives with his father. He plays with his tools. God only knows what they do together. But it's very, very sick and it's very abnormal. So I don't even need to ask you personal questions. I already got your number. You heard a song by Phil Collins? Billy!
Billy, I got your number. I got your number, man. I know everything about you. You're just a dude that your father probably threw you 10 grand, okay, to maybe, you know, start some sort of stock market portfolio. You lost all the money. You lost everything, you know. See, see he actually did lose on AMC. You sold your AMC, it's gone. You, you're down on Megalodon, it's it's gone. The car, most likely, your father leased it for you. You drive around a car. Okay, there's nothing. You're you're not self sufficient. Now you compare you to me. Okay, I bought my car. My car is in my name. I've showed the deed that it's paid off in full. Okay, the whole thing with this concept of of the houses in my mother's name. I'm power of attorney over the estate. My mom, you asked my mom straight out. I put the down payment down on the house. I paid a mortgage on the house. Okay, it was done for certain reasons. And it's funny, the guy actually says, Jennifer, that he has cancer in his family. He takes it seriously, he says. If you have cancer in your family, you friggin' piece of shit, no offense, that you should totally understand <clears throat> the high cost of, of, of medical treatment for cancer. And you should totally understand a lot of things that goes with that, okay, and why I put the house in my mother's name. But you know what? Obviously, you're just a complete, utter hypocrite who has absolutely no, no, I mean, you act like you're a good person. Like, he's like, oh, my, my family is going through cancer. Bullshit. Listen, to me. it's either one or two things with your family, and I'm going to be hardcore with you. I'm going to be hardcore with you. It's either your family is going through cancer and you don't give a shit about them, okay, or you're just using that as a talking point to try to make yourself look like a decent human being, which obviously you're not. If you really were a decent human being, you would understand the high medical costs. Well, I don't even know what type of cancer your family has. Is it stage four? Is it stage four? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, you know, it could be the very beginning stages of cancer, which is no big deal. Okay. My wife is dealing with the hardest part. Okay. So the point, I'm just trying to make a point. I structured my finances to protect my family, to protect my wife, to protect my children. And you find it to be a joke. That doesn't seem like someone who takes cancer very seriously. You know what I mean? That doesn't seem like a good person. That seems like a piece of shit devil. That's that, that to me. Okay. So there's nothing good about you, bro. Why don't you have a girlfriend in your life? Why don't you have a girlfriend? I mean, you're a grown man. You live with your father. You are literally John C. Riley from Step Brothers. You live with your father. You don't have a girlfriend. You probably don't have a girlfriend. And I'm going to take a wild guess here. I don't know. Call me great. Number one is because women see you live with your father. They realize you're a loser. They realize you don't have a life. They realize you don't have a future. You're very, you're butt ugly. I mean, you're dead. You probably have chronic bad breath. You look like you're, you're like a, out of like a friggin' movie with that hair. You look like Team Friggin' Wolf. I mean, you're a very unattractive, fat, disgusting human being. And on top of that, you might be able to at least get away with some of those things if a girl said, well, he has a future. You don't even have a future, bro. You live with your father. You, you're waiting for your father's next $20 bill so you can get yourself some wigs. Listen, you don't really even have to answer questions, okay? But the debate's not going to be fun unless you try a little bit. You got to try a little bit, okay? You can't just be like, look, I don't want to talk about nothing. I don't want to discuss nothing. You, you got to be a little open to discuss things because I have a lot of questions. I really want to dig deep into your life. I want to know about you. I, I just want to know things about you. And if you're not willing to discuss anything, the debate's going to suck. Listen, the debate's going to suck, okay? You got to answer at least some questions, okay? So what what are, what are those questions? I want to know what you do for a living, number one. I like to know how much money you make. I like to know exactly, what are we talking about portfolio-wise? Like how much money, what, what do you got, about 2,000 in your portfolio? What do you got, about maybe 1,000? What? <laughs> What are we talking about? The car you have, is it leased? Is it financed? Okay. 
How long have you been working at your job? You're a real man, right? You've been there for a long time. Can you prove it? Can you prove it? How long you been there? Okay. How do I know you're not collecting SSI? How do I know I'm, that you're not collecting Social Security disability? You're obviously not playing with a 52 deck of cards. Okay. So, I mean, these are questions I'd like to ask. Now, see, I have no problem. My wife doesn't get Social Security disability. She should. But because of some stupid rule, okay, with the Social Security Administration, she, she got turned down. Because, see, my wife started getting pains many, many years ago. She didn't realize it was breast cancer. She stopped working. She, you know, luckily enough, like, you know, you always make fun of me. And you said, you made a comment like, I, I'm never there for my wife. I've been supporting my wife her whole entire life. Where she did not have to work most of her life. She worked when she was very younger. She worked probably from like 16 into her like, you know, very, you know, mid to early 20s. Other than that, being with me, she had the, the luxury of not being able to work because I supported her. I, I've been in sales for over 20 years. I don't think you understand this, brother. Brother, I was a sales manager at Hilton. City Search. You, you know, I work for huge corporations. CBS, I, IAC, Viacom. I, <laughs> you make it seem like I never worked. Bro, I had executive positions. I had executive making six figures plus more with commissions and bonuses. You have no idea what I've done in my life in sales. What have you done? What was the most money you ever made in your life? I mean, bro, I even hit $250,000 on the lotto. Have you? Have you? Bro, I could go on and on and on. My whole life has consisted of me always having a lot of money. Always. When we first got married, me and my wife, we bought a $505,000 to $5 house in Jackson, New Jersey. How about you? This is when we first got married. I have a $550,000 house now. How about you? So it's like, can you prove any of these things? Or all you're going to do is just keep talking. Right? And there's nothing to make fun of with me. It's like, your jokes are corny. Your jokes are not real. They don't make any sense. There's no facts behind anything you're saying. Like, at least if you came out with something that was factual, if you came out with something that was factual, I would give you credit with credits to it. I'd say, okay, he said something factual. But so far, you have not said one single thing about me that's factual. Nothing. Okay, you, you just come out with, you just start speaking. Like, oh, you never, ever took care of your wife. Listen, bro, when we have our debate, I'll put my wife on the phone, and she will tell you that not only financially did I take care of her, I used to read every medical article that you could imagine. I became an expert on her condition, okay? And I was so smart and knew everything about her condition that I used to have long, long conversations with the doctors. They thought I was in medical school. That's how much I took an active interest in my wife. You know, I, I, I worked my ass off to get my wife out of a small apartment into a big, beautiful house. Okay. And let me tell you something. I still believe to this day I saved my wife's life. Cause if she would have remained in that small apartment and I was a bum. Okay. She would have never, she would have never, I don't think, and God forgive me for saying this. She would have had a very hard time getting through. I gave her a house, my first house at Great Kills, where she had a room the size of like friggin' Trump Tower. It was huge, her room. She had a shower in there that had, you know, like seven, ten jets from all different there. It was like a professional massage shower. And it used to make her feel great. It massaged her whole legs, her back. It took all of her pain away. I used to serve her upstairs. She had her own TV. She had her own refrigerator. I she didn't have because I, there was a time when she first had a very difficult time walking, and I nursed her back to health. I did everything for my wife, and then it got to the point she was able to walk again. She was able to function, and she she made a complete one eighty for the better. Thank God. Okay, now she's a champion. She's walking up and downstairs. She's walking all over the place. Because of, honestly, yes, of course, because of her treatments and because of the of the efforts of the doctors. But I was there from her from the start.
from the start, supporting her, loving her, giving her my heart and soul, and you have the audacity to say, I, have, I, I don't do anything for my wife, who the F do you think you are, man? You don't know nothing about me. You don't know about the love I have for my wife. This is what I'm trying to say. Everything about you is just made up BS. So it's not really a great debate. You get to say, in other words, here's a debate. You get to say whatever you want about me, even if it's not factual and even if it's not true. And then I ask you one simple question about yourself and you're not willing to discuss it. I'll still have the debate with you, but here's the bottom line. You're not a real man, okay? You're a little boy who depends on daddy, okay? You don't, in my opinion, it's either you don't have a job or because you're, I always see you making videos. It's either you don't have a job or your job is something like maybe part time, part time at Wendy's or something like that. Listen, you look like a mess. You don't have a girl in your life. I asked you a simple thing. You told me you were a track star. You admitted to me you can't run anymore. You said your knees are out of whack. Is there anything you can do? I mean, I'm just saying, look, bro, you seem like a big, gigantic, real-life John C. Riley stepbrothers loser to me, okay? But let's let's have the debate. Even though you're going to punk out and chicken it out at every single question I'm going to ask you. But either way, I'll win because I'm just a, I'm, I'm a more powerful man than, than you, okay? You're beneath me. You're beneath me. I am too strong for you. Ultimately, I will be victorious.